I've been fascinated with for a while. I, I really, I think that maybe a lot of people have thought about it. I don't think a lot of people talk about it really. I think it's just hard to talk about. And it's one of those things where I think people, it, it, it's, they probably have some sort of plan or they have an ideal about a plan, or maybe they're like, Oh, I got plenty of time for that. But they haven't quite put the pieces together and chat before we go on to, uh, I just want to put this in chat and I need somebody to give me an answer. Cause I want to, I want to have these numbers up while we're talking about it. So uh, let's see chat, go to this poll, please. And we're going to sit here and we're going to listen to elevator music until you all tell me which button to click. So the poll is, what kind of gains do you need to make with Pulse Chain, Pulse X, and Hex to retire? And again, just here, just everyone can define retire however they wish. For the purposes of the poll, retire as in choose your own business, adventure, beach, whatever you want to do for the next 20, 10, 20, 30, 40 years, whatever it is. You can look at cost of living, do all these calculations that's outside of the scope of this. This is just, hey, what would you do if you made a whole bunch of money? And we'll get into how much and what you can do with in all these scenarios too. But if you hit that number, in 2025, 2024, 2025, how would you get liquidity? How would you actually use it outside of crypto? Assuming you want to actually use it in the real world um, and better yourself there in all these ways, sell, borrow, stake, convert, you know, into, into real world assets, um, all that stuff. So, okay, first answer here we got is from Drip Fortune 2 mil. Um, so I'm, I'm going to go with, I guess, two to three mil. That seems like the most fitting uh, for that answer. So, First off, Neil, your reaction to the answers in this poll, is the distribution what you thought it would be a little off? Um, I think it, it is probably close to what people giving it the eight, the eight, the demographic in crypto would probably pick, right? If you're young, say you're in your 20s and you think two million is a lot of money and you get two million, you can retire. Um, that's just hey, that, that's kind of a fantasy world, because if you had two million dollars today and you're 20 years old, how long will that last you? You're not going to retire. You may not work for a while, but when you hit 40 and your money's gone, you got to get a job. You have no skills, no training, and then you're going to be you're working fast food somewhere, right? I, I'm, I'm assuming, <laughs> I assume when I saw this, I assumed most of the people who hit less than 2 million plan on doing like Eastern Europe or Asia, somewhere cheap in Asia now, for a while. And that's I, that's more more likely. Yeah, it's possible. But if right, you were just right. an American, nah, you can forget it at, at a young person. Now, if you're, you're 70, you get $2 million. Well, then, hey, I can ride it out, you know, until the rest of my life. That's different, but that's different. But here's the thing, you know, the thing, I mean, lump sum cash is one thing, right? What's going to sustain your, your income because inflation eats that up and people have to understand that. So if you have a lump sum of, of, of sales, you, you sell the top on whatever and you get all, you get out with all this money that after taxes, right? Then what are you left with? Right? So that's, that's the question you have to ask yourself. My light's kind of going crazy. <laughs> um, Yes. So which, which piece, I mean, where do you want to start with this? Because I feel like there's a few different ways we can break it down, but I, I just think the framing of, you know, for example, I have, I have an example we can go over to, you know, if we do a hundred X from here, you know, hundred X, just generally speaking, your, your 50 K portfolio in crypto turns into 5 million. Um, mm -hmm. You need, let's say you're like, okay, I need like 3 million for, for expenses, cost of living, whatever for the next 20 or 30 years, whatever time horizon. Again, these are all example numbers. Everyone listening, just make up your own numbers, but this is just for an example. Um, and then what are your, what are your plans with, you know, with, with that particular scenario? If, 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 if you were executing here, is there risky versus less risky plans, selling versus lending, earning yield? How would you, how, do, how would you think about that? Well, so you'd have to, I would, I would encourage a diverse approach to getting out um, and never be all in, all out or, 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 or maxing any one thing, because once you're out of the system, then you're out. Right. And so even if you go to the next bear market, it's probably not going to be to the bottom of where we are now. It'll be at a higher low. So if you try to reenter with some capital that you took out, you'll be in a worse position. So then you'll be upside down in, in token count. And then you may not get the next the, the gains you got the first time. So that's something to consider. Um, but if you had to say five million dollars, um, and you you say, well, I'm gonna take say two or three million out, and I'm gonna I'll leave two or three million in, or say half or whatever, then you must park your money in place to earn yield, even in a bear market. And so what we'll have the next bear market is something we didn't have this bear market, which is pulse chain, with all the all the um, uh, the DeFi protocols on it. So you'll have protocols like. Uh, the PH ecosystem, you'll have liquid loans and power cities earn, you'll have uh, Tetra out, you'll have, um, you know, 
win win. You'll have a, a Mentra and all these other things that earn income and yield that you could park your money in. I mean, you could, if you want to stay in stables during the next bear, you could just park it into a, a, a balance of fork like what B Buck has built, and you can earn yield in your stables. At least you're making some money during the bear while you're, while, while, while let your money work for you. If you're not letting your money work for you, let, you're going to try to sit in a bank account. Inflation is going to eat you up, and you just don't have the buying power. So if your money's sitting idle, it's never it's not being put to work. You're you're losing out. Or you can use Tetra and just use like you know you can even do a simple uh, ratio trading with your assets and just swing trade and arbitrage your stable coins and earn yield that way. The options will be endless once we have all these DeFi tools out there. So just on the you know so the plan somewhat. It could be something around, okay, you got 5 million, 3 million. Let's start with that too, the, the 3 million part. So we got 2 million. We're going to you know, say, put it in, leave it in crypto. Mm -hmm. And then we'll, we'll go over the choices with that. And you know, we got a bunch there and uh, park it and yield or otherwise. But the 3 million you take out, how do you mm -hmm. how do you take out 3 million in crypto? What, what are the options with Pulse Chain? Well, you sure can't market sell. You'll eat a bunch of slippage. So that's that option's out because you, you'll just, you'll just, you'll get wrecked. So, there's there's options with uh, the loan protocols, liquid loans and earn. You can get out that way by taking a loan. Um, and depending on if you care if you can liquidate or not, that's up to you. You could get 90% of it out and get liquidated, but at least you got 90% stable coins and you're out. Yeah, you'll take a 10% haircut, but you're out. You could, or you could take a higher collateralization rate, get less out. So that means you're locking up more money in the system and say you want to take 10 to 15% out and are saving collateralized. Um, well, but none of, that, but none of those without risk, though. That's that piece, too. I think that's something that a lot of people plan on doing or are very mm -hmm. interested in doing, but they're afraid of liquidation. And mm -hmm. I, I think for good reasons, because if you get liquidated, yeah, you get to keep what you took in the USDL. But mm -hmm. if you're doing 150 percent, 200 percent, you know, you're only going to get to keep half, for example, or or however much. And if you get liquidated. Yeah. Can you explain the liquidation price and how much how much could you actually lose if you get liquidated? And you, can you take us through a scenario on like that? No, you, yeah, you, you get liquid. The whole point is you lose all of it. If it's not a partial liquidation, you lose all your asset. That, that, that's that's the thing, and people don't understand that that risk. So that's why it's important to have a healthy collateralization rate when you use these protocols. So obviously, uh, the more if, if more and more people had a higher collateralization rate, the healthier the system would be because there'd be that much more buffer between the asset value and what's out there in stable coins, right? And that's how it works. And so with the redemption mechanisms and how it helps balance out uh, the value in the system, um, that's what people got to understand. They really, they, they, I mean, Walrus has some, a lot of good videos on how that works and a lot of mechanisms of and the functionality of why it works the way it does. Because the thing is that that stable coin is always got to be redeemable for a dollar's worth of the asset, period. And it's got to work in an algorithmic way because that's how it's built. And this is an immutable code. So it's just going to do what it's going to do what it does as a function of the market. So if you're only if you're trying to get out with a lot of capital and you want to have two or three hundred percent collateralization rate, you're still going to be at risk on high volatile swings. So you could you could lose your bag. Um, you may have the, the stable coins, but you lost your bag and now you're out of position. Now you can buy it back if the, the price drops unless, unless you took the stable coins out of the market. You see. Mm -hmm. So with the, with the scenario of three million, let's say, you know, you want to take a loan, three million, you know, you don't want to pay tax, all that stuff, whatever benefits you, you feel like you have with mm -hmm. that. And what, what kind of, I mean, to enable to do that and feel good about it. How would you do that and feel good about it? Like, does it high collateralization rate? What, like, so 3 million, if would you do 200%, 300%, like what would make you, and then what time in the market, you know, is it, is it better to do it earlier? If you feel like the price is going to go way up or, or later, like how do people, you know, really just not feel, not be nervous about, okay, I'll do it. I have all these benefits from it, but then if I get liquidated now, all that money's gone. Like, well, why would I, why would they choose, you know, the loans over that versus for selling it, even with the benefits they think they're going to get? So it, it, it you, you, you mentioned the timing of the market. That's a very important. Right now, we're in the lower part of the, on the market in the sense of our chain and age because we're only a few, six, seven months old, right? And the, uh, the price is still low. We're, we're still around sack rate, right? We went half sack rate, just, you know, you know 70 something percent below sack rate, as low as this went. But, as things go up in the bull, then all of a sudden will be whatever the X is above sack rate, right? We don't know what it's going to be. Let's say it's 50 or 100, whatever. Well, it's a good chance then it's going to go back down. Maybe it goes down to 
maybe it's bottoms out at five X bucks sack rate on the next bear, right? So that's a big dip. You're gonna you're gonna eat that. So you gotta plan for that. So if you're at the bull, top of the bull, and you have all this money, maybe taking a loan at the top maybe is not the best deal, even at a higher collateralization rate, because there's a good chance the value of your asset is gonna go down in the next as the cycle moves through to the next bear. So you gotta plan that out. So then maybe that's not the best option for you if that's what you're gonna use as, as collateral. But if you if you have the money today or have the assets today. Then it goes up. You can then you can extract value now to the top of the bull and take a little bit at a time and then increase your collateralization rate as you go up. So on hmm. the next bull, next bear cycle as you approaches, you've extracted the value. Maybe you, and you took the stable coins. Let's say you put them to work and through an arbitrage or through some stable coin pairs and LP with them and stuff like that. You earn yield on your loan. And now you have all this extra money you've earned and yield you've earned during the cycle. At the top, you have this extra bag you can get out because it's not locked up. And then maybe pay back some of your loans so you're not eating up and then make that decision at that point. Well, do I maybe just market sell or do I go ahead and top off and take all, all of it out because I made my money? I'm willing to lose that 10 percent and do a max a max 110 percent loan and you're out. Maybe that's your choice. Mm -hmm. You know, people have to make that choice. They, you know, if when if they want to get out, not the whole bag, but that the portion of the bag, because they say they still have, say, two million left over. They can they're just working it through other uh, type of DeFi protocols. Well, let's assume for this, again, they got five million total, their portfolio just hit five million, did hundred X, got five million mm -hmm. now. Awesome. Want to take three million, want to leave two million in crypto, one million, whatever it is. Let's say three million want to take out at the top. How do we, if it, if if not if a loan isn't a good idea because if it may go down, it may get liquidated, all that stuff, what what are other options? Well, market selling is it or uh, I mean you can always provide liquidity and pair it with like a with a, with a um a stable coin and then your assets being traded as people buy it and now you have stable coins and you just pull them out and pull your liquidity as you want you see and you sell that way without hurting the price that's when that's another option that's how whale that's only way that's a good way that's the way whales can get out if you have a lot of assets a lot of money you know whether you use a v2 or three through liquidity you can set your price points in v3 you can v2 you can just put, put broad liquidity and you just get the stables as people buy your assets and then you pull your liquidity as you need to you get, but you're never, you're never going to be able to market, sell, or get out with one lump, one lump sum anyway. You just can't do it, you know, unless you take a loan and get liquidated and you're, you have all stables. That's, a, but then you're losing out, right? And that's what happens. So, so, so that, that that's just reality. Like a, that sounds like an advanced type of thing too. Mm -hmm. If when you want to get liquidated, so with this example, three million dollars. If you wanted to, get, if you were okay, you're like, okay, I'm going to take 110. percent I'm going to take 150. percent Whatever it is, it's not super high. And you're okay getting liquidated. How would that work out? Like, is there a benefit in doing that? And what is the what is the cost? Well, you lose ten percent, right? You lose ten percent of your bag because the value because you're taking ninety percent loan, right? That's that's your, your that's your fee to get out. But it's, it's that may be cheaper than market selling that same amount because you'll dump the price probably more than ten percent against yourself. That's a big big position. You say. Um, so you take the loan and get it, you get liquidated, it goes back in and the rest of the system buys it up from you. All the rest of the people who are taking out vaults in, in, in the stability pool will then pick up your tokens at a discount and distribute it to the people, right? Whichever, well, whichever whether it's Pulse or Pulse Axe, either one, you say. Well, I think a lot of people are, are probably looking at, at the tax, again, uh, no not professional advice, tax or financial or otherwise. A lot of people, I imagine, are looking at the tax benefit instead of paying... Mm -hmm you know, more than 10% with 110% collateral, mm -hmm. that's what you would lose. It would be, you know, they, they would, they would save money there, but if they get liquidated, Correct. maybe that isn't part of their plan anymore. So well, here's, here's the option. All right. So if you're, if you're leaving anyway, you need to sell your tokens They're they're gone, you get liquidated and they're gone. Either way, the tokens are gone. Well, if you're going to pay taxes, you lose 30, 40% or I can pay 10% liquidation fees and I'll have 9% of my money. 90% is more than 70%. So therefore, that's and I'm not pushing the price against myself as I try to with, with, with slippage. So that's probably the best bet. You see, I can exit out and distribute my tokens well, amongst everybody else. Again, they no, benefit, I'm out. You know, no tax advice or anything, but I've heard that liquidation would be, you know, taxable event, all that stuff. Is that I don't know. I'm not a tax guy. Yeah. I have no idea. Yeah. I but mean, that, if, the only reason I bring it up, only reason I bring it up is because I think people are probably thinking that of like, okay, well, if I do get liquidated, is it still, is that still part of my plan? Because my whole deal was to save taxes. But if I get liquidated, maybe, and again, depending on how you do all this stuff, where you live, all that, don't, no yeah, idea. No idea. But I just, 
yeah. Anyway, everyone be careful with that. If that's, if that's part of your plan, f- figure that out and do whatever you want. Um, but uh, that's, that's just one piece I wanted to cover because it seems like, you know, it could be in certain cases, no brainer to get liquidated, but at the same time, it's, it, yeah, it depends on what you're trying to do with it. And uh, if you're trying to exit a huge amount, like if it's, if it's millions of dollars versus, versus smaller amounts, uh, or if you, and if you're trying to get liquidated too, and you don't, uh, if you're not trying to uh, withdraw it, or if you want to keep it in crypto or roll it into other stuff, there may be other, you know, other ways to do it too. Um, but again, so 3 million top the bull um, is it, so you got liquidity. So maybe, maybe loan, maybe, maybe not loan. Uh, you got liquidity, you got, so besides market sale, um, is there other strategies? I mean, like, you know, different, different setting. Uh, I think I feel like the stables is the way, but it takes time. That's the thing. It's like, do you value the time or do you value, like doing it quickly or doing it over time? Is that kind well, of the key? Well, that, that, it, it, yeah. Well, it, it, it's a time horizon. If you have $3 million and then you put it in uh, an LP position, uh, or through some arbitrage strategy or something. The question is, what's your ROI on that? I don't know. I mean, I won't know. It's, nobody knows. But depending on the market and the, and the, and, and the, uh, the volatility in the market and, and, and the volume, $3 million should yield you a pretty substantial amount of in fees, right? Depending on your position in the pool. So maybe you're not having to sell, but you're living off that that those fees with the whole bag What instead of trying to sell it all. Maybe if unless you unless you need a lump sum of capital, most people don't need three million dollars in cash, right? They could deal with say, may I take fifty grand out and I go pay my house off or whatever, and the rest is sitting there earning income where I'm getting you know thousands of dollars, you know, a week in fees. See, that's not a possibility in some with that, that kind of capital. Well, in, I, in, I, in, a, in high of a bull market with high APYs and stuff. Yeah, I think. So I think in this scenario, I mean, you have, you make a great point too. Like, would you even want to take it out of crypto? Wouldn't you want to, if you believe stable coins are not going to zero and you put it in a platform that's not going to zero, why not just leave most of it there? Even if you want to make, and you could just make big purchases when you need to or, or otherwise. Mm-hmm. But I think, I, I think some people too, maybe want to turn it into real world assets. Maybe they want to say, okay, mm-hmm. I'll leave 2 million in crypto, I'll earn yield or whatever. I'll take the 3 million in this scenario and I'm going to go, you know, be a, I'm going to go be an investor. I'm going to go mm-hmm. buy real estate. I'm going to go, you know, do somebody in chat mentioned startups and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I need it in the traditional system. I need it in the banks, uh, all that. The, it sounds like the options are slowly over time with liquidity um, or again, market sale uh, or somehow, you know, maybe a limit, limit sales, right? Like put, uh, mm-hmm. put, put, put limits and stuff on that. You can do it over time to get a better deal. We get more, more money for, uh, for your, for your assets um, or again, the loan options, but again, do, do your own research, figure that out, make sure you're okay with the uh, liquidations or otherwise part of your plan. Um, is there any way, any way else to get liquidity from $3 million in some asset or staples you can think of? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All, all the yield bearing assets like loan token, earn token, watt token, Tetra, um, Nentra, well, you, I all think, those I things think give you yield. The assumption with this is you're at the top. You're not sure if the token themselves, maybe you want to go in stables, but like you, you want to be in either, you know, you want to go to Bitcoin or Ethereum. You want to go in something that you don't think is going to drop 90%, for example, not saying loan or anyone that's going to do that. But at this point you're de-risking. You're like, I need to get liquidity. I know I'm going to earn some yield, but also I want to do it, you know, in bigger chunks or so. Mm-hmm. Is there yeah, outside I mean, of your so, life? On that? So, so you could, all right. So you could, let's say, if as your assets appreciate and say, let's say you start with $50,000, let's say, and you did the loan thing, you did some LP providing, you diversify your portfolio. And as you took your, your profits on the way up, you buy some theory, you buy some Bitcoin as you go. Right. So you have to have a plan for the up, the upswing in the market. You got to say, okay, I know the market's going to go up. We're going up now. I know it's a cycle. And we, we're, I don't know what the type is going to be, but I know that as I go up, I'm going to acquire these other assets. I already have an exit plan in place now so that when I get to that point, I'm not left scrambling trying to market buy, you know, Bitcoin and Ethereum and, and at the top. You see, I'm putting my money into work all the way up. And tools like Tetra and stuff will be able to do, let you do that because you, you could autom- autom- automatically buy and, and accumulate you know, with limits, all these things as you go up. So then at the top of the bull, you've accumulated, you DCA it all the way up. You're ready. You got your, your assets. 
And then when the bear starts, you say, okay, now it's time to exit. And I may move to Ethereum, try some stuff over there, or maybe I just want to exit out with what, I, what I've acquired, you know, because you can market sell Ethereum and Bitcoin and not care, right? Because there's, there's tons of liquidity over there. So those are all the options yeah. as well. You know, you get out, you could, you could easily get out with you know, large amounts of money without, you know, dump the, you know, the price because of the amount of liquidity they have it together as those assets. So, so it sound, sounds like for this scenario, for $3 million, you could uh, market sell, loan or over time with liquidity uh, and take pieces of it or, or, or however. So with the $2 million, you leave it. Okay, we got $5 million, $3 million, we're getting, we're using for liquidity. We're doing whatever with either big chunks or small chunks. And then the other $2 million, what do you think, again, top of the bill, top of the bull, $2 million, where are you putting $2 million for, you know, the rest of time, right? You may make some trades, you may, you know, a new protocol comes out, whatever. Maybe you put a portion of it. You could talk about that too, like a portion of it. You know, you got your you got your risk ninety percent core, ten percent uh, risky or whatever. However, however somebody mm-hmm. says it. Um, where, where are you putting those for yield and to make money and to maybe you never have to take it out or you don't have to take it out for another ten or fifteen years? What do you, what do you think? Well, what are options? I mean, not to be you know, nepotistic, but I would use Tetra's tools to search the market for the best ROI. Because it's it's going to have different strategies out there with different with, with different returns listed, so you can have the option to diversify your portfolio to earn yield across the market, and that's the, that's what we'll be offering. And it'll do different things. It'll, it'll it'll diversify based upon you know the market at its time. We'll have dynamic strategies and everything else. So some of those, let's say that I mean, so just for people to understand the strategies too, like the different ones you could deploy that would. Would it just go again? You get yield on stables. We're kind of getting to like how to make money in crypto. By the way, mm-hmm. anyone hasn't yeah. seen that? Search, search yeah. RH Max making money in crypto. I got a playlist and Nils, Nils on one of the episodes. But those pieces that you can automate and make the money for you, right? Whether using Tetra or, or anything else, th- that's the places you think in the next, you know, I'm going to leave this money in crypto and hopefully it grows another 10x or something over the next five or 10 years. I can get, I can do the same thing, get more liquidity. How? Mm-hmm. Where we, where do you think the best bets are? Well, uh, stablecoin arbitration is very lucrative because it works in both bear and bull markets. Um, swing trading to c- increase token count is a, a popular strategy, and as everybody's using now, and I'm realizing that they can increase their token sp- token counts and whatever assets they like, like Pulse and PulseX and stuff, for example. Um, and then thing t- protocols that earn real yield, like uh, Liquid Loans and Power City and, and uh, PHU system stuff. Those things all give you real yield based on user fees. So parking your money and your tokens in there uh, to utilize their, their, their programs and their staking platforms are ways to generate passive income. And that's what it's really all about. Just having cash alone is okay, but without yield, it's all going to be used up. You're going to spend that money eventually. You got to eat. You got to live. You got to buy things, right? And so as you overcome the inflation or deflation of fiat, you got to have way more passive income and yield than the inflation has. Eating, eating up your purchasing power. So that's that's kind of where we're at right now in 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 the markets in the world. So that's that's the, the situation we're in. So using the tools in DeFi to uh, to maximize these uh, gains and positions is what you want to do. And so if you are going to sell, let's say you got positions in meme coins or whatever you're into, you can in and, and the bull market, all these things are going to be up. People are going to be buying them because it, it, it's, it's narratives and people love their coins. And, and and then you can sell some of those and make take good profit. You may be five or 10 extra positions that you diversify in your risk bag and you make some extra cash. But put that cash to work for you in the future. See, you do stable coin arbitrage and make money on your money. Use flash loans and strategies using it. There's, there's tons of options. It's just a matter of where putting your money in the right place. And then so we're and we're offering tools to help people to uh, to manage that. An automated way. What, what do you think is the safest place uh, to park that two million dollars? Would it just be stablecoin pool to earn mm-hmm. earn yep. earn fees on the protocol yep. or stable or up. stablecoin liquidity? One of those. Yeah, yeah. Provide liquidity and stablecoins, uh, and or arbitrage or both. I would do both because then if you provide liquidity in a pool and you're arbitraging in your own pool, you're paying yourself as you arbitrage. Well, think about it. Well, yeah, <laughs> interesting. Yeah. Uh, also, also, you're you're de-risking on the on whatever platform you're using too, because Correct. with with liquidity, and if you're doing stablecoin liquidity, um, you know you you have the two stablecoins. But if you're doing you know, uh, either single side staking with a stablecoin or a stablecoin in another pair, and the other pair you know goes to zero, that sort of thing, uh, you're mm-hmm. de-risking too. So uh, interesting. Mm-hmm. Exactly. 
I'm going to go. So there's a few comments. I told uh, him I go through the comments here to see which, what uh, people are talking about, what their ideals are too. You guys serious about being a millionaire or anything about tax plan, not to structure things, government tax 50%. So this is, uh, for example, if you, if you plan on wherever, again, wherever you live, not tax advice, you plan on paying half in taxes or otherwise, do you think about that? I mean, do you think about the, the need to, um, you know, make, make much more in order to pay whatever fees or taxes or whatever things you, you, you plan to do? Is that something you factor into the model? Oh always at least for, for americans at least 30 percent or maybe 40 because uh we have just the way the capital gain system is um not to, and i don't i haven't seen the new updated tax code that this year so this 2024 ta 2023 taxes i hadn't done mine yet so whenever i get the program and all i have to see what what's going to require you know and we don't know and every year it can change you know who knows after richard's sec case maybe they change the code again we just don't know um so we're all kind of in limbo we just got to pay you know, pay what we owe as just part of being you know a citizen so of the us but if you're in other other countries who have don't have tax tax your know, crypto earnings and you know good job <laughs> uh fox modder uh, aren't you exposed to slippage when you trade your bag for the stable i mean yeah i mean you don't you don't dump your whole bag because that's part that's 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 that's, that's, that's why you use limit orders and stuff um so you just take do it do it little bits at a time you're not going to market by Three million dollars worth of stables out of a pool. You'll, you'll yeah, you'll bet you'll make a mistake there. That's that's why you use the tools. That's why you have to plan on the way up. So you position yourself in bits and pieces, and you grow your position. So when you get to the point, you're not all in one, and you're not pushing the price against yourself and you know, dumping and having a bad pool because you'll cause a massive arbitrage event, and people will you know you'll lose money. That's what will happen. The slippage. Uh, Hex nobody here says uh, Zerus Coast is the best off ramp. Are there any strategies with Coast? With that, you know, three million dollars in scenario we talked about. Oh yeah, I mean, you could use Coast off ramp and on ramp. I mean, that's that's their, that's where they're here. Um, now, now they're limited in liquidity at the moment because there's only just a few million tokens, like what, what eight or ten million tokens on chain, I think, something like that. So that's all you can get out. So if you're taking a third of the tokens out of the, off the chain, you're gonna you're gonna cause slippage there too. Again, something you got to consider. Um, so we don't know what the bull and the bull. Hopefully, there's more tokens come in, right? That is, you know, fiat being used to buy uh, coast tokens. So that's, that's an interesting nuance there too, because you think of coast. Like first thing I thought of is, well, but you'd be minting those three million, but it's actually the other way. Instead of right. going from the bank, instead of having three million in the bank already, you're trying to take three million as liquidity to off ramp through a native uh, off ramp on Pulse Chain. So you actually you're burning the tokens. You're burning three million dollars worth of coast tokens. So in order to off ramp natively through Pulse Chain. We need a lot of people to mint CST in order to mm -hmm. do that. Correct. That's yeah. exactly what we need. And that's what that's what we would love for people to use to come on. Um, I'm no, no telling what's going to happen in the future. Maybe in a year from now, another on off ramp comes up. We don't know. We have no idea who's who's developing stuff. Maybe there's another solution where Coast doesn't have to take off the load to share the load. So it's not they don't get you know wrecked. People whole, whole bunch of people leaving at once because it will mess the price up. You'll have a, a stable coin that's out of whack in the price. Assuming they didn't mint the money to come on and they're just trying to exit through coast. Um, but why would you don't, I mean, you don't need to exit through coast, right? Like wouldn't, wouldn't we be able to, I mean, anyone can just bridge across to Ethereum mm -hmm. and then exit yeah, through any other off ramp. Mm -hmm. I wonder how much, I wonder if that's going to be a problem, <laughs> good problem to have again, but like, mm -hmm. I wonder if that'd be a problem in the future. Too many people trying to use the, you know, native stable coins on pulse chain to off to off ramp once we get to that point, or will, do you think we'll, you know, you think we're going to have hundred million dollars in CST one day by the time the bull I'm, is topped. I, I'm sure uh, coast would love to have a hundred million dollars in the CST one day. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I mean, it'd be great. They did, but who's to say that there's not some whales out there who won't provide liquidity on Ethereum with USDL and USDC and die on, on Ethereum right now. You can bridge your USDL over or your, your USP XDC and you can, you can then get out say through Coinbase or whatever. Right. So th th those mm -hmm. are potential options that but it, somebody's gonna have the money to do so. Somebody's gonna be willing to put the liquidity up on that side. They'll be earning fees, so don't get me wrong, but that's that's something we'll that, that's something the chain will need to mature and to be a robust chain. We're gonna need that eventually if we really want money to go back and forth. Uh, it, it, is that why PHUX is so important for stablecoin liquidity, being able to, I mean, off ramp one day? Is it is it gonna be helpful, you think, in the future for that? To trade between the stable coins 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to be able to trade between stable coins? Yeah, yeah. That's exactly it. So, um, I, I, the, the, in an ideal world, you should be you, you should be able to take any stable coin, swap for the other with a lot of liquidity without no, any slippage. That'd be the ideal perfect scenario. So no matter which stable coin you're in and which protocol, you can get out. But that's not the reality now because of liquidity. So that, we just kind of have to build liquidity up by you know onboarding more people to the chain. That's true. So we got Teddy Be Teddy Beard. <laughs> Liquid loans for PLS are not working at all. Take the USDL and trade for USDC, Brits UDC, and send the Coinbase redeem walk away. What do you think about that? Loans is liquidity. That's the thing. I don't know how big the pool is. So I don't know, top of my head, I don't know how much the big the USDL, USDC pool is. What if there's only a million dollars in there and you got three million? How are you going to get out? Even if you took a whole million dollars, you would need so much slippage and cause an arbitrage event that somebody would take half your money. You see? That's what people mm -hmm. got to understand. Without that, even if there's a lot of money, there's not any liquidity in the pools. You can't get out. You're limited what you can get out. At most, it was like 4 or 5% before you start eating heavy slippage. I mean, the higher you go, the more slippage you eat. So people have to understand when you trade stuff, because you know, we've learned this through our limit orders and stuff, when you try to set limit orders and slippage, if there's low liquidity or high volatility, it's hard. It's really hard to get good trades through. You just, you just lose a lot. What solves that? Is that, you know, for example... You think they'll we'll see more platforms that you can take you want to buy a house and they accept bitcoin like all you know off off chain off market type things maybe they'll you know accept pulse chain for mm -hmm. um I don't, I don't know uh just just doing different types of deals different investing oh, yeah. rolling rolling your mm -hmm. crypto into real world assets do you think we'll see more of those in, in the, coming I, I would hope so i would hope the next bull market the the, the 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 fiat world would realize the value of cryptocurrency and then we accept it as directly as payment that solves a lot of problems there if i can buy my groceries with my pulse pulse chain tokens or my usdl usdc boom i, I i'm great you know let's say um they come up with a credit card or something some credit card company has to deal with some of these you know liquid loans or something or whatever or something like that or third party Pro protocol does this. That'd be ideal. I can take my pulse chain, load up a card. I can go buy groceries. I can pay for gas. Maybe I can pay my rent, my power bill. I'm not leaving a chain now. I'm not dumping the price. I'm just sending it to another address, right? So, and then they're taking custody or whatever you want to call it. They're, they're taking, you know, they they have the tokens now. So is, is that the, that's is the, that the ideal cool situation. Like, is that the cool thing about, you know, people, to me, it's always one of those like, oh, it's cool to have a, you know, a Pulse Chain debit card or a Bitcoin debit card, or Ethereum debit card or whatever. But like, what is, what is it actually good for? Is that what they're good for? Is like literally you just, you can actually do real world stuff with your coins mm -hmm. without, you know, without having the negative side effects. Well, yeah, they have to actually you know, pay a fee to cash out, right? So I think if I'm mistaken, I think Coinbase has a card that you can load with USDC and go buy whatever, just like a debit card. It's really what it is. And then using USDC as the, 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 the collateral because they're swapping it to fiat and then paying the vendors you know on, on through the network right other than the normal you know credit card transaction fees so yeah i mean that'd be the ideal situation for, for the cryptocurrency or have a way to do it via you know the, the qr codes and stuff you know i'll accept payment just send it to this address right like the, like i think is it, is it, was it, was it no. el salvador right you can buy stuff with bitcoin it's legal tender you have it on your phone. You can go buy stuff. You know, the merchants say, accept it. I like the, the crypto debit cards, aka stop market selling cards. Uh, mm -hmm. That's what, yeah. Stopmarketselling.com. Maybe that'll be a thing. Mm -hmm. but the, the, but those are, that's, that's, a, that's innovations that's, that, that they have now. I mean, I know I think crypto.com and Coinbase both have cards mm -hmm. you can use and load them up and use them in the real world. Um, and that's just, basically you're just loading them up with, with cryptocurrency. And, and so you're not really selling it so per se. You're just moving it to a, an address. So I think the next big, yeah, yeah, the, the ones for purchases, but I'm just thinking too, the next big one would be like, okay, if I want to, I want to go buy a boat, I want to go buy a Lambo, I want to, you know, pay off my mortgage. Like, how can I do that without market selling that type of thing? Like, big, bigger custodians or however. Well, another, it's really up to, think, it's think, to well, think about the vendor, the boat salesman. If he's got any sense and knows about crypto, he'll gladly accept a, a boat, right? I mean, I mean, uh, the, the cryptocurrency for a boat. Because he knows he's going to make money on his asset. So as long as he, he, he doesn't have to immediately pay it all and sell it himself, he can keep some. Or maybe he holds it. Maybe he has enough assets he can just hold, hold it off for 30 days and sell and make a profit on his profit, you see? I think most of them would uh, be happy to accept it in the in the bull and then uh, they'd mm -hmm. hold on until, until it went down. But they wouldn't want to accept it in the bear where they'd actually make all the money. 
mm-hmm. but I'm sure there's some out there that that there are into crypto and actually can can do that stuff. Shout out to Christoph. For me, it's all about mortgage. I can pay it down. I would open up shorter days. I can spend with my daughter. That's what it's all about, Christoph. Mm-hmm. Shout out to you. Hopefully you get all, may you have the maddest of gains. That's what, uh, that's what we're trying to do here. Let's see. Uh, good question. Uh, I'd be planning uh, now, then later. I'd probably take a portion for real world assets. If stables gave me yield, like a savings account portion, you can go there. I'd probably look in the borrowing versus market sell to keep the staking ladder going. Boom back as well. Yeah. How does, that's one thing we need to talk about staking ladder is that, you know, for, I, I was shouting it last year so much like, hey, I've I've never made so many stakes in my life right now. The T-shares are the cheapest ever been. We got mm-hmm. BitBoy out here. He's about to start going full into Hex now, too. So that's going to be exciting. We'll see. Um, but staking ladders and being able to pay yourself, you know, whether they're monthly or, or quarterly or, or whatever it is over over time. Again, it's, it's subject to the price uh, of Hex fluctuations and otherwise. But uh, being able to give yourself that sort of paycheck over time consistently uh, is that part of a strategy for exiting without, I mean, still got to, you know, you got to sell the hex or whatever to get your liquidity out, mm-hmm. but at least you'll be, so, so that's the downside. You, you still have to sell in some way or still have to exit, but you're, you're also, you're gaining, you're getting the yield and hopefully the price don't drop 90% anymore. Well, who knows, but hopefully, uh, hopefully, hopefully that was a one and done. Uh, you never know, not financial advice. And then, uh, but you still have, you're still getting the yield and you're still getting that kind of like a paycheck almost, right? Like, is, is that, mm-hmm. You see that part of a broader strategy? Oh yeah, I'm sure. I mean, people who are uh, investing in hex and using the hex inflation model to to take that yield and and, and sell it at at their exit points. Uh, that's that's a definitely legitimate, and that's what it's there for, right? That's why hex was invented. It's trustless yield, and so you, you have trustless yield coming in at regular intervals, and then you'll get your yield and you'll you know, convert it to whatever asset, whether it's you know you know stable coins or you know a pulse chain, pulse X, whatever you know, and you'll figure a way to exit you know what if you sold you what if you trade your hex for pulse and then took a loan or trade your hex for pulse and use it in in, in with with a uh, uh lp and then now you're getting your lp fees and that's that that's residual income or whatever the options are there i mean there's you know and i'm sure hex is probably not the only product that can stake on pulse chain i mean maybe other tokens that come out in the future with a staking ladders ability to stake and earn earn yield so you never know i mean there's a lot of options what if somebody invents, invents something that allows you to to take your hex stakes and do something else with them and collateralize them. Who knows? I mean, that's been talked in the past, you know, you take these HSIs and collateralize them. I mean, these are all yeah. options that are, that are potentials that hex has the opportunity to be built upon. Neil, you know my wish list. Number one, staking ink. And number mm-hmm. two, collateralizing what's the NFTs. Mm-hmm. You know, that's my That'd wish list. Cool. Those two. Those two. That'd be pretty cool. I'd like to see that. No pressure. Well, I can, uh, I can, I can probably do the first one. The second one I'd have to do some math on, but yeah. I, uh, okay. Yeah. I feel like you're good at math. I, I just have a feeling. A little I bit, feel you, a little bit. you're okay. Uh, Red Squirrel sits you up for a good one here. Sit on my <laughs> Tetra P and draw stables as needed. What is he talking about, Neil? <laughs> well, you know, if you own Tetra tokens and you stake them when a staking contract opens, you'll be earning two different tokens. You'll be earning Pulse and you'll be earning stable coins. As long as the protocol is used. So there you go. Yes, search uh, RH Max Tetra. I've got quite a bit of content on the channel about it. One of my one of my favorite protocols. So I'm excited for it to be fully, fully fledged and usable coming out. Right now we got Omnis uh, the Dex, which I've been using a lot more lately too. It's uh, again once mm-hmm. you once you figure out limit orders, you uh, mm-hmm. you don't go back, as they say. You, know, you don't go back. Oh no, you don't. It's like, well, what's what's the point? Why would I ever market trade ever again? You know, when I get a better deal, e- even a half a percent is better than market buying the day, right? So. <laughs> Dude, like every day people are like, I, I see some comment or otherwise for one, people don't understand there are limit orders on pulse chain. And for two, mm-hmm. they don't know how to do it. And I don't know how much we can talk about it and do videos and demos. And I can tweet about it one day. Everyone's going to understand what limit or orders are and, and how they're so powerful. I know, I know you've been shouting right. forever, man. Yeah. Let's see. Interesting to see. Most people are thinking of selling their holdings. I understand swapping real estate. Thinking that I have a good asset to hold. Not many think Hex as the next Bitcoin. Is it how how bullish are you on Hex now? We don't talk about that a lot. But how bullish are you on Hex versus Pulse Chain and Pulse X and stuff um, as of now? As out of what you, what you can see now? Well, I would agree with Richard. I think people understand Pulse Chain and maybe Pulse X better than they do Hex. They still do because of what it, they are, right? For whatever reason, Hex has a uh, there's like a, a ceiling of learn of understanding that people just can't get past the average person. So it just takes more and more edu- more and more intense education to show people that 
what, as Richard says, Hex is just Bitcoin with a proof of work change, right? He said it for years. Um, it's a better store of value and you earn, you know, trustless yield in Hex. So I don't understand why they don't get it. I really don't, but they, they just don't get it. And so, uh, it's just going to, it's going to take even more, more and more education, uh, for the community and more and more in community engagement to really educate the masses on how wonderful this trustless yield is that Hex has. And so, you know, it's, we can only do so much, right? We shout it, we talk about it, we tweet about it, and we're, we're, we're going to call it a cult and everything else. So, but at the end of the day, the average person is going to understand Pulse Chain because it's like Ethereum. They'll understand Pulse X, they may equate it to the Uniswap or something like that, Unitoken. They can understand that because they see an example. But because Hex is unique and it's like Bitcoin, but it's not either at the same time, they just, it goes over most people's heads and they just, they just can't quite grasp the fact that you can stake and get more of the same thing. It is incredible how, how people it's, I don't know how much content, how much I think, I think if you want to pay attention to it, you will. If you want to learn, you will. Mm -hmm. If you don't, you won't. And I, I've, I've accepted that. I've accepted that. So it gives me more peace about it. If you're, if you're meant to understand it, you will. Uh, mm -hmm. all, all we can do is, uh, you know, talk about it in the most intelligent way possible. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll be right back. Can you uh, maybe you pick one of the or talk to the chat or otherwise pick one of these that are up? There's a few new ones here. If you want to just riff oh, on, I'll be right back. Hold on. Uh, I, I can see here. <laughs> All right. Let's see here. Well, we'll say this. All right. So I can't I can't we can't read the chat too well on my phone, but um. My, the best the best play plans are to have to have a plan on what you want to do because I know uh, Matty Allen has a uh, he was always about sudden wealth syndrome and people who were in hex uh, got that you know got, got sudden wealth syndrome and had all this money and didn't know what to do with it right and that's a real thing and having money is one thing but you know having a plan to do what you do with your money is another so it's important to have a, have all this mapped out have your security in place have your your seed phrases protected. Uh, have a will, have have instructions and stuff like for your for family and stuff like that. Um, these are all real world things we all have to think about. And so if something happens to you and, you know, how's your family going to have access to your wallet and stuff like and all those things. Um, and then once you get these gains and you start making money, how are you going to how to grow it intelligently, how to grow it in a way that will be uh, 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 fruitful for you and, wh and what protocols are, are quality. And then as you accumulate, compound it. And at Tetra, we're going to have all offer tools and services uh, through automation that allow you to auto compound through various different protocols on the blockchain. And so these are tools we'll be offering, and so you can use these tools to really grow your bags. And then uh, since we talk about limit orders, limit orders is just the first step. So right now you can set limit orders, and you can you know pick your points and buy and sell at your at your choosing. And there'll be other tools and services available that allow you to automate this process over and over again where you just basically have, have tokens funneled into a wallet, you, you can exit as you go in the bull run. I heard everything. I agree. I like it. I like it. Lots of, lots of good stuff. I'll, I'll do maybe one or more, one or two more here, and then we'll go to the chat because chat's, uh, chat's got a lot of opinions and interesting uh, comments as well. Let's see. Mm, <laughs> I just want a badass staking ladder. Shout out to you, Joey Tool. I love people talking about actually using and staking hex. It's not uh, not super common these days. Let's see. Yeah, we talked about earlier the you know this is this is a U.S. entry talk. You know, I know people live in different places over the world, but uh, it's hard for us to speak to other other places and cost of living when we don't live there. Um, let's see. Let's country offering zero percent crypto gains getting thinner each year. Yeah, what is it? Uh, is it is that going away in Dubai or are they getting rid of the business? Uh, they had like zero percent business tax or something like that, but I think they're they have restrictions now. I don't know uh, I, how much longer. It's I'm not. Else. I'm not up on that. I I did. I think I read somewhere they got rid of the alcohol ban. I think and that's about that's what I saw somewhere today. But other than that, though, I don't know. I'm not sure about the business practices. Lights out. Uh, fuck stablecoin pools. Fiat stablecoin uh, stable deposits. Bear market unstakes are a horrible plan. People who depended on put on that push the price down ninety percent. AK thirty. Day rolling stake guys. What, what do you think about that? Oh, okay. So he's comparing 30 day rolling stakes versus uh, stable coin. Uh, all right. So the 30 day rolling stake plan works great as the price appreciates. Price goes down, it's awful, right? 
So not only your, your T shares are going against you, then you get less value for your, your tokens. So you just, so you re, you restake and you get fewer T shares if, if you just stake longer. So that's, that's the problem with the, with the rolling stake in a, in a bear. Um, but if we have hit a price appreciation level and we go back to say 50 cents to a dollar dollar for hex and you have rolling stakes, you're doing really well, but then you got time to market for that. And when do you start? I don't know. I'm not, I, I don't have a crystal ball. I can't tell you what hex is going to be in six months. So, um, we, we, Richard keep buying it up. Who knows? See, we don't know these answers. And so that's, don't you have enough, Richard? Don't you have enough? Just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. No, I mean, Richard, Richard, Richard just buy him up and push the price. Right. And he, like he, like he did the other day. So, and he may be, and maybe his plan, who knows? Um, but I would, I would hope he would use that, that money to benefit the community in that, that such a way. And, and we know he loves sex. So I said this before, before that we actually had the pump that, Hey, if Richard bought stuff, we could probably see a, a great, a great, uh, push in the value and it happened you know i mean if he keeps doing it it'll keep doing going up i'm excited for uh godwell he's back on twitter i'm excited mm -hmm. to see him and what moves he may make uh benevolent mm -hmm. benevolent ones at least that'd be awesome um christian i retired last year and still waiting on second retirement hex shout out to you christian appreciate having retired people whether it was from hex or otherwise you guys mm -hmm. seem to be less anxious than the people who are desperately trying to do what you've done and uh mm -hmm. everybody's got their own situation but uh that's it's, right. It's hopefully, hopefully all the effort you put into it in this ecosystem works out uh, again. Mm -hmm. right? It's, it's an amazing thing. Uh, let's see one more. I thought I saw one more. It'd be interesting. Oh yeah. So hex helper. Um, this one, I just wanted to turn into a different question of, are there ways to exit that benevolent ways to exit? How about that? Ways that you can still get liquidity do what you want without, and, and it causes the least damage or the least, you know, a downward action for the ecosystem. Uh, LP providing is probably the best way because then if you have hacks and you want to get out, you pair it with stable coins, provide LP, people buy your hacks and you get their stable coins. It's that simple. That's the, the least impactful way to get out. Drip fortune, buy a house and put in stocks, rest in fame, LL core, a few other protocols that I imagine that's what a lot of people want to do. Again, we go back to the scenario we talked about the, uh, you made, you got a hundred X on your 50 K you got 5 million taking 3 million out. Uh, maybe you want to buy a house, maybe you want to pay off more, maybe you want to do whatever. And then the rest in, uh, you know, the different pulse chain protocols are, is it, I know we talked about a bunch of different strategies, but do you, do you see a lot of people, is that good for the protocols too? Like p cashing out, do you, what kind of effect do you think that'll have on the yield bearing protocols? Well, there'll be less liquidity in the system. So there's less yield generated by people using this, the services. It's just that simple. I mean, just like everybody who exits, you know, Ethereum and stuff, it hurts the whole protocol. If you got millions and millions of dollars leaving, price goes down. I mean, you know, if protocols like Aave, GMX and stuff like that, Curve, they lose volume going through them. So therefore, before yield goes down, it's just, it's just basic mathematics. And the, and the people, and it, so for example, you take 3 million out and then you got the 2 million. If you're, if you were to take the 3 million out, exit, and then take the 2 million and put it in, you know, fame, LL core, you know, all the stuff listed here just to earn, is it, do you think it'll, maybe that'll be a balancing out effect too, where you'll have people take exiting, but then also moving some of their core positions into the protocols too. Maybe, maybe that'll, you know, not, not yeah, cause yes. a big, big deal. I would hope people be wise enough to do, do things like that. I mean, use and use these tools for their advantage. You need yield. You got to have yield to, to, to overcome inflation. You have to have, you have to money. Your money has to make money. If it's not, if it's sitting idle, you're losing out. Just sitting on stables in your wallet is the worst thing you can do because you're not making anything. Put those stables to work. That's what you need to do with your, with your, your assets. Or well, if you're sitting <clears> in <throat> volatile assets, I mean, you got tools. Now you can ratio trade them, increase your positions. There's really no excuse for anybody to sit on tokens and just holding them while you have tools to increase your positions, whether it's in stables or, or volatile assets. It is that simple. There's no excuse anymore to lose losing money, especially on Pulse Chain. And bear, I will create clubs with my buddies together with rural industries by politicians. Well, there you go. be a force for good in the world, Finn Bear. Hopefully, your ideals are really good ideals. I, I imagine <laughs> if you're in this ecosystem, you might have an idea of what good ideals look like. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Fox Mulder, I trade in a crypto IRA, no tax. I can't touch until retirement. Yeah, what do you uh, what do you think? Crypto IRAs, stuff like that. Is that uh, interesting, not interesting? Any, any I have no idea how they work on, on a technical level. That's outside my level of expertise or, or even understanding. I know they exist, but 
I don't know how that works because like who holds the keys, who holds the assets, you know, what does that mean? Somebody's making money on their, on, their, on those tokens and it's not you for using them. They're making the money I, and you're getting less yield, I bet. I did some, uh, I did some research a while back. I know rocket dollar was pretty popular with hex concern, the blast bull run. And if I understand, essentially you, I mean, of course you pay a fee for them to manage your, your, uh, mm-hmm. your account and all that stuff. But you control your wallet and, uh, you know, you got to be very specific. I'm not going to talk in details because I don't anyone. Everyone go watch videos. There's all kinds of stuff. I learned how to do it. But uh, essentially, you can just take you can control your own keys, your own wallet and stuff. You got to be extremely careful and only do certain things and all that. But um, and again, you can't touch until retirement. It's that's uh, what I understand as well. But um, there are pros and cons with it. I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of I'm kind of. Uh, all right. What's um, what's the first rule of crypto? Who who custodies your coins? You or somebody else? It, it, well, who you, who well, has control yeah. of the seed phrase? You. Why would yeah. you give you control of your seed phrase and or your assets to anybody else? That's, no, no, that's this against any principle of what we do. No, this Period. one is if, again. There's different systems, but from what I understand, this one is you create your own wallet. You so basically you transfer, you take whatever assets you convert to crypto, you send it to an exchange or whatever, and then you can take from that exchange, send it to your own wallet you create on MetaMask. Nobody has the seed words from. And then once they're in that wallet, you can take those funds and do again. I'm going to. Hmm. I'm not any professional on this, but for I understand, you control the seed words, you make the trades, all that stuff, and within certain bounds. So they don't actually have your seed words. Um, they just have you know you got to go through centralized services. They got to manage your account, but they don't have your seed words as for, for the setups I've researched at least. I mean, I'll be honest with you. You can do the exact same thing with Tetra once we were out in automation and set up your own way to manage your thing automatically. And it'll take all that yield, go to a wall of your choice. And then you have 100% access control and nobody else is taking the fee from you except you're paying your, your gas and Tetra fees, period. Like Why would you like want to? The, the DeFi yeah. version of, uh, of, of that. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, that's the whole point. We we want people to custody, be, be, have self-custody. We want people to be responsible for their own assets. If you're relying on a third party and some centralized thing, why would you want that? You need everybody needs to learn to stay away from this centralized stuff as much as possible. Yes, you have to go through them to get out, and sometimes to get in, but that should be it. I mean, Richard even said this specifically that you give them a little money and they hope they give it to you because you never know what they're going to do. Selfies, blood samples, all that. Mm-hmm. And we'll see update on uh, BitBoy's uh, video, Ben's video. He will he will look at hex will change real DeFi. Mention them all. I call it crypto for now on price prediction video coming soon. All right, sounds like like a start, and uh, cool. look forward to more of the documentary stuff too. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Robert says hex PLS value tied to stables. Also, if you pull the stable, does the value of the token go down that way too? If hex PLS value is tied to stables, yeah, yeah. I mean, so that's what happened. So. It's it's it, you just you know it's just V two it depends on what, the, what type of pair it is with V two liquidity you know if you pull the stables out right there's less stables there's more of the other so the value of that that price the item goes down but also lots of people buy it up so it, it's just it's the way V two liquidity works you know urban productions uh, if we don't want to use loans can we trick our profits to avoid slippage mm-hmm. yeah you can always sell little bits and, and, and reduce the amount of slippage to an intolerable level. So I mean, you maybe say say, limp, say say you want to get out and say t- take a limit order and set a little bit every day and get out that way. So you you the mean the, the, the least amount of slippage at the price you're willing to sell for. You see, and you don't hurt, you don't push the price against yourself. So every time there's a pump, you sell. You see. Hmm. Let's see. Just scrolling through here. Fast wants you to make sure to don't forget to automate the bribes. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. He and two fucks. <laughs> uh, let's see. What is your opinion on the pulse chain stable coin situation? I guess just in general, what we got going on. I mean, we got, you know, two day of stable coins soon to be three with PXDC coming from the uh, power city guys. So that's great. Three day of stable coins on a brand new chain. I mean, that's, that's awesome. Um, and as more liquidity comes in, there'll be more uh, opportunities to uh, trade them around and uh, eat less slippage and hopefully people be able to get out. So I think it's wonderful. And there's arbitrage opportunities between them all as well. Let's see. Do, do, do. 
Thanks, Chris. It's crazy to think some of the lowest DC amounts of $500 will make millionaires at the bottom PLS 4033. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What do you think about just, again, not from SAC price, but the ability to scoop up Pulse Chain, Pulse X, the other ones, 2Hex from below, way below SAC uh, for, you know, Pulse and Pulse X. And um, is, is it, is this going to be like one of the greatest DCAs? If you actually bought the bottom, do you believe? People are going to just be telling these wild stories about how they DCA'd, bought below sack, and they're able to just make these massive gains in uh, the next uh, next little bit. Do you, you feel like it's it's really one of those opportunities that just will be they'll, they'll make movies about this stuff, Neil? Oh yeah, I think it will be a, a, one of some of the greatest stories. People buying the, buying the bottom and then think if this thing ten thousand X is how much money they'll make. You know, five hundred dollars gets you you know a million dollars or whatever it works out to be the math. So yeah. So, like, I need to step off for a second. I'll be right back, okay? Okay. No worries. All right, everyone, just going through your comments. Has it? Are you not entertained? Have you not soaked in enough information to uh, plan, hopefully plan well, your your retirement? Uh, not that we give retirement advice or any, any advice whatsoever. We're just talking about different ways to do this. But if you were working on a plan to not work forever, go... Uh, be a force for good in the world. Go achieve your dreams. Go free up your time. Buy all that stuff that you want to buy and uh, eat all the things you want to eat and, you know, do whatever you want. Like, literally, I think anyone who buys their freedom can can choose. You buy your freedom, you choose what you want to do. I don't care what it is. Literally, you could just, you could, I, you know, it's one of those things. The system is set up where most people can't do that. And it's good for the world, logically speaking, if most people can't do that. If you have people, you know, working, I know there's all these different ways to look about it, but, you know, GDP comes from a place, right? Comes from people, productive businesses, otherwise working in society. If everyone's retiring when they're 30, then your society is not going to be very productive. And there's, so most people, when you even talk to them about this with crypto and otherwise, they don't even care. Like they don't even, it's not even on their radar. They couldn't even believe it if you told them about it. And that's the secret to crypto. It's one of those things that once you see it, once you get it, you 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 get it, you understand, and you see the opportunity where it is. And it doesn't mean you're going to get it. it doesn't mean it's going to come true for you. It just means that again, that's why I love the secret system. It gives you, it gives me a fair shot, right? Like I don't feel like I'm going to be rugged. I don't feel like I don't know what's going on. I I don't, you know, I, I trust in the protocols, the code, instead of somebody holding my keys somewhere. So it's it's all the people who don't want it they're leaving meat on the bones for the people who do and if you're in this ecosystem man you know nobody can do anything for you but i'm sure glad for me i feel like i have everything i need to be extremely successful and uh i believe i believe we have the tools to to make this uh to i can't even put into words how excited i am about uh Finally, some some good news. Finally, some green candles. Fin- finally, we put on all the work, you know, blood, sweat, tears, effort, and we're starting to see signs that people are paying attention. They're interested. The market is turning. People are putting in dry powder, Bitcoin ETF, all that stuff. And all we, you know, in a sea of uncertainty, I've said this a few times, in a sea of uncertainty, all I can do is place my bets accordingly. And I bet on this ecosystem. I bet hard. And it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. Having skin in the game, contributing, making sure, um, not just me. Again, I've talked about this before. I want everyone to win. Everyone who puts in the work and effort and believes and sticks around and does the right thing, I want them to win too. I don't want it to be a zero-sum game. I don't want to be the only one that wins. I want everyone to win. And I think the, the this, this DeFi ecosystem we have is set up um, to make that possible. Yep, I agree 100%. Um, and you, you mentioned something there about people like not working anymore and stuff like that in GDP. Uh, I think Richard made a comment a long while back. He says, I don't think people should stop working. I think even if you make a lot of me in hack, you should continue to work because it's good for your character. And that's true. I mean, we weren't you know, created to sit and lounge around all day, you know, and do nothing and be lazy sloths, you know. Uh, we, we were built Shut to work. Be at, yeah, right. Hey, Crypto Sloth, love you, brother. No, but I'm just saying, well, not, not a slight to him, but just in general, the idea that 
just because you have wealth and and you get mad gains in crypto and to pulse chain stuff, you should you you should not be idle. You know, life uh, needs to be fulfilled, and you need to have a fulfilled life. You know, your family, friends. You can be benevolent with your with your wealth. You can help the poor, the needy. You know, whatever needs to be done. Um, and and not and not be lazy because, I mean. We, uh, us, the guys in Tetra, we've all talked about this in, in ourselves. You know, we really like helping people. We really like what we've built and how the tools we built are going to benefit others. And it's something we'll continue to do. Like Stu and the guys, I mean, we've all talked about this. This is not something that's ever going to go away. We're going to continue to innovate because we, we are we like helping people. It's it's a fun activity. It's a fun job. Um, even though we spend a lot of time doing it, and we're just all waiting for the gains now. But when the gains come in. It'd be very fulfilling to see others, you know, be able to retire, be able to pay off their mortgage, you know, to ease the burden of the debt that they're in, stuff like that. And so if you do get these gains and, and we do 10,000 X and all these these wonderful narratives we talked about, um, I think it's important for us to remember that you know, we still need engineers, we still need doctors, we still need teachers and firemen and policemen and all the things that make the society work and run. You know, I'll probably continue building and, and building houses and doing repairs and stuff for people. I mean, I may be able to do it for free and offer those services as, as a charity and stuff like that for those who are in need. But those are the things that we that, that are the type of, of opportunities that crypto present itself to the masses. Yeah, I definitely think that the spirit of, you know, I remember Richard saying that too. And it's the spirit. I think the people who need to hear that maybe are the ones who want to buy the Lambos where they just they just mm-hmm. don't really have a plan. They just they just want to, you know, six months, I need to get rich. What, what meme coin can I buy? That type of thing. There are certain mm-hmm. people who need to hear that. But I think the people who already know that, for example, they're, it's kind of like, I, I kind of, I'll do the analogy, you know, you, you work for a company, you work for some startup and you love working there and they turn into like a billion dollar business and all your stock, stock is suddenly worth millions of dollars and you're rich and all this stuff. The fact that you're still there and that you've been spending all the time there and you didn't leave and you, you stuck it out and you're one of the first people, you probably love what you do. And even when you're rich, you're not going to quit anyways, because the reason you're rich, the reason you stayed around the entire time is because you didn't want to do anything else. This is what you love to do. So it's kind of one of those things. I think it just works itself out. I think he was for, for that particular one. He's, uh, he's talking to the people who, you know, don't are living in dream, dream world of just want to get rich quick and they don't know what to do after that. Um, but I think the way I take it is I, I hope everyone if I were to phrase it more specifically and I would, and when I talk to people about it, like whatever you want to do, you have earned it. So I would not judge if someone this cycle, they get rich in hex and pulse chain or whatever it is. And they, they get their 5 million, 10 million, however much. And they go and they literally go to the Bahamas and just like hang out and party and, and just go explore and, and, and do whatever they want. I would, I would not look at them with, Oh, you need to be a more productive person. I would say, wow, you, you earned it. You do whatever you want to do. I I literally would not hold any, I would not ask them to come back to society, that type of thing. But I think that's the, that's the second level thinking of it. I think the way when Richard was telling people, he's literally speaking to the general population who doesn't know what to do with a lot of money. But if you already know what to do with it, then you're probably going to keep being productive anyways, because that's how you got there in the first place. Does that make sense? Well, yeah, exactly. Well, think about this. If you want to travel and you go to vacation or going whatever you are at contributing to society at some level because you're paying for food you're paying for housing you're paying and tipping the waiters and waiters and stuff and the bus boys and you're providing you know economic energy to the local places you're, you're visiting there's nothing wrong with that and you've earned it and that's great um but i mean you can only vacation now i guess the average person can only vacation for so long i mean at some point in time you want to live your normal life i mean i guess some people don't mind traveling all the time but to me, that would get old. I would, you know, I like selling. I mean, I like, I have a small farm here. I like, I like gardening and stuff and raising animals. So I'll probably spend more time doing that myself personally, uh, and less time, you know, swinging a hammer and, and those, those type of things. Uh, but I'll still be, or I'll be build. I'll probably, you know, me and Stu and the guys be working, you know, on innovating new stuff for Tetra too, and other, you know, protocols and stuff that we, we come up with in the future. So, yeah, I mean, but. The, the, the money's a tool, right? It's not the it's not the end. It's a means to to the the, the end of whatever you're trying to achieve, right? If you want to try to achieve financial you know independence, great. Everybody want, that, that's a wonderful thing because if we, if we all had it, we'd have more time to devote to our families and stuff, and less time you know being you know slaves to the system, so to speak. But then again, you know, 
if I'm a doctor or a nurse or something, you know, I, I need to be there to help people because that's kind of why I went and trained. Maybe I don't need to work, you know, you know, 24 hour shifts, you know, you know, five times a week or wherever the schedule is. Maybe I can do it, you know, three times a month and <laughs> ease my ease the work of my body. But at least I'm still contributing and being a beneficial a person in the society. Yeah. And, and that's probably something to wrap up on, too, is is, you know, once you again, this this is how, you know, it's 100 X enough to retire. Let's say you get the money. Everything does well. I hope I hope, I hope everyone here is, is able to do that. You know, get get at least have the have have the uh, liquidity, the capital and stuff to go work, work on whatever they want to do. Once they have that, you know, you talked about still being productive in society and, and otherwise, again, if you, I, I believe if you, if you do make it that far, you probably will already have it in you to keep going and, and or do the next thing or, or whatever it is, as you kind of alluded to it too. What, what is a way, you know, if you're, if you're not going to be, uh, you know, a doctor or an engineer or whatever it is, and you're just, Hey, I've got a job. Uh, I either don't want to do it anymore. Or it's not really interesting enough or it's not helping society, whatever it is like, can you can you imagine people who get rich in crypto, get rich in your good system or otherwise going to fund initiatives, going to like, uh, you know, you talked about charity work and otherwise mm-hmm. making a difference with capital instead of with labor, that kind of thing. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's kind of funny you said that uh, me and the Tetra guys were talking, some buddies, we we're just all sitting chatting. It's like, you know, if you have money coming in and you don't have to work and you're more than you need. What if you just, we all thought, what if we all pulled our money together and like start an orphanage to help people, stuff like that. Capital like that really helps, can help others. You know, we can hire people and, and, and you know, it helps to help these poor and the poor and needy, stuff like that, that you really could do with just labor alone. My own one person can do one thing, but say 10 people with a lot of capital can do a really good deal. You know, I mean, it's, how do you think all the hospitals in the United States were started back in the day before the government got involved? It was all charity. All, usually the churches started hospitals, you know. That's what, and, you know, you had to think the first one was like a VA hospital up in, you know, for the, for the, for the veterans, but the churches were the ones uh, who, you know, started in East America, all the hospitals that we had in, you know, before the war. So it's just one of the things that, you know, when people have access to capital and are taxed to death, they can do good in society if, if left alone. That's what, uh, I mean, that's what I believe Richard's mission is too, is he wants to mint you know, through through his efforts and products and, and ideals and stuff, he wants to mint more people like him that have ideals to be a force for good in the world that want to go get rich and then just go do amazing stuff. And uh, man, that's that's one of the killer instincts of this ecosystem. I believe that we have, and not everyone has, it. everyone has their own way of doing things and ideals. But I think one of the, the coolest things that we can share with people in this ecosystem is the ability to, I can't put it better than that, be a force for good in the world. Go get rich and go do some right. cool stuff. Whatever you think cool is. Hopefully your cool is uh, actually cool, but uh, whatever it is, you've earned it. You've earned the right to do it because you you put an effort to to make it happen. 